Hey guys. I'm Bob. I'm Barb. Together we make up Hedis World. So it's a travel day video. We are traveling from Hot Springs, Montana to the heart of Glacier. You're going to see beautiful scenery, but my question to Bob is what the heck happened to the road? Where'd the road go? So stay tuned. Before we take you into this amazing video, we want to once again remind you to please subscribe to our channel. Yep. We're trying to grow it. We would like you to give us the big thumbs up. And if you're obliged, you can leave comments because we love to read them. So we're getting ready to hook up and we're leaving Hot Springs, Montana. Yeah, this is a park we did not do any kind of review on because we would not recommend this park to anybody. Hit a couple spots. So yeah, there's only like six to eight spots here and they don't really have a hot spring. They have a hot tub that may or may not actually have a hot spring coming into it. So we're not recommending this park. So hooking up day, you can see it's a beautiful sunny day. This is unusual for Hedis World here. Yeah, normally we're leaving and it's thunderstorms and stuff. But this was very easy. We were in the city, the actual city of hot springs. And as you can see, I've got my checklist. You always want to go through your checklist and you want to try to be just in the zone. That way you're not missing any steps. This is definitely an easy pull out. You pull right out and you are right on the street. Yeah, we were parallel with the little two lane road alongside of us. It was in and out park. Getting in was a little tougher because we had a pretty much jack RV to get in there. And we are now embarking on a three hour and 30 minute drive to yep. Heart of Glacier RV Park. Yeah, it was a nice short drive, easy drive, not real hilly or anything like that. So you see our last video on Flathead Lake, I'll link it below. We are going to see Flathead Lake ahead of us and kind of follow that ride just for one part of it, basically. And then always when we're traveling, especially on longer days, I try to work on videos for you guys. So this is typically kind of what it looks like. But the scenery is incredible. Yeah, everything about Montana was beautiful. Definitely a state we would like to uh, revisit again. When we first approached Montana, it was pretty much open farmland. It's just a large state with not a lot of people. But once we got into this area, it was just absolutely beautiful. So we definitely wanted to share some of this with you and how easy the camper tra um, travels down the road here. Yeah, having that independent suspension and having that airbag uh, front hitch, you can see it working. It does a great job. ready to come to like a pivotal point in the video here at this point we are like eight miles nine miles to our campground but we come to a block in the road as you can see they got it blocked off and we're sitting there we are the very first vehicle in the line yeah we're sitting there nobody come up and talk to us normally you know flagmen's you know we think they're just going to flag us around and give us the slow sign and we're going to go around and she's very nervous looking at us and she's looking at us she's talking our two-way talking our two-way she does come up and talk to us eventually after 15 minutes and says that the road is washed out and that they're going to add some additional gravel because our rig is so big so it's like okay yeah. <laughs> so we sat there for another 15 minutes while we see, you know, truck after truck going by, putting, dumping gravel down. She goes, I assure you, they're not going to let you go down through there until they know it's compacted and you're, you're not going to have any problems. So driving our rig on fresh gravel is horrifying me at this moment. 
Yeah, we're, we're worried about our overhang on the back and how low it sits when we go off-road and it's not an off-road vehicle. No. She flags two motorcycle riders around us, which by this time the line is getting pretty long because they're waiting to get this gravel down. She talks to them, and then those guys decide to leave, and she walks up and tells us they don't want to drive through the gravel with their motorcycle. Yeah, they were on bikes and you know could easily fall over on yeah. loose gravel, so they, they aborted the mission. So we're still sitting there. By this time, the escort truck comes back a second time, and they decide they're going to take us through, and they turn around, and this is 45 minutes have passed. Well, he takes off flying, and I'm like, well, I got 61 foot of trailer and camper here. I'm not going to go off-roading fast so they take us off the road we kind of dip off to the left side we and we probably wind through about two and a half miles of on-road off-road on-road off-road off yeah. we, we gravel find, kind of yeah. dirt gravel and yeah we find a spot where they had fixed it for us and then you the, can see in the video where the camper is kind of a little you know in the background because we're, we're the truck's doing it as well yeah we're passing all the workers are looking like there's the camper we did this all for you know, wasn't our fault, but uh, that's what happened. And the the weird thing about the whole thing, when we got to our campground, they told us, yeah. well, you could have bypassed this if you would have just went on up to 464 and went around it, which we didn't know. And there was no detour sign saying it. You know, there, there wasn't even a detour sign when we got to that point. It was just yeah. like, the Stop. road is stopped. Yeah. And I guess the road had slid off or washed off or something. So yeah. they had to do some repairs there. Hashtag when a mountaintop goes... <laughs> yeah, so we, it was an adventure. It was a couple miles of, we like said, on and off road. And we survived. Yep. Pro tip is that you always need to call the campground that you're going to. One, to make sure they understand, yes, I'm coming. My reservation's still there. And then uh, how big your rig is. Make sure they've got the right spot for you so you understand where you're coming in, especially if it's a paid park like this. Yep. And what I've learned, not only from this trip, but recently going to Batesville, Indiana, you got to ask them, is the road closed or are there closures? Because they don't tell you. Yeah, I mean, this was a private campground and we make reservations. We make sure it's big rig friendly all the yep. time. And then, yep. especially Thousand Trails, because on their sites it might say big rig friendly and then you'll call the park and they'll go well big rig friendly is 38 foot and, yeah. <laughs> and we're you know 60 plus with the truck but yeah. 44 with the camper we, we've had a couple where we've been really tight we've made it in there but it's been really really tight and usually due to the roads and the tree line rooftop review of the heart of glacier rv park here in montana you see there's mountains all around us. And off to the distance over here, you can see, you can see some snow in the mountains. So now let's talk a little bit about the campground. Bob just kind of showed you from the top the views, which was the most important part of this campground. It had the mountains. Yep. And it was a nice campground. I mean, it was very well graveled. It was easy to get in. Uh, we were able to park, and it was, you know, fine. It had full hookups. Yep. Everybody in the office was really nice. And it was a pull-through spot. They had several pull-through spots, and they knew we were a big rig, and they had a spot assigned to us, yep, so it, it worked end. out real well. We were against the, the woods leading into the mountains. And the nice thing is, unlike the last park, I actually got to wash the rig here yeah. and not get in trouble because this park allowed you to wash a rig. This park has absolutely no other amenities. Like they do have a laundry Yep. And that's pretty much it. But you're five minutes from the park, so it was one of our most expensive parks, but it was the least busiest side of getting into Glacier. Yep. And yep. I'll link our last video below right into the Sun Road so you can see how close it was and how easy it was. But it was cheaper than staying on the west side, which was the more definitely more expensive side. Yeah, and, and a lot more people on that side of the of yeah. the park, for sure. I mean, we always try to look for city camping, Corps of Engineers, you know, state parks, national parks, wherever it might work that we might fit, but it doesn't always work out. You know, if you don't have a thousand trails and these other ones don't work and you really want to go see something, like we wanted to go see Glacier, then you're going to be paying some money, which we made that sacrifice, I think, three times last year. Yeah, if you get around these national parks, you're and it's in its uh, height of the season, which is pretty much the time of the year where there's no snow. Yeah, you're probably going to pay up because it's just the, they they got you. I mean, there's nothing you can do about it. And believe me, we did a lot of research trying to find parks that were reasonable, and there's just none available. 
And if you don't snatch them up quick enough, we probably got this six months in advance. Yeah. In fact, yeah. they weren't even open when we called them. I think they were under a snow emergency yeah, when the, we called them. Yeah, the owner checks their messages, so they called and went ahead and booked us. And it is the cheapest of all the RV parks in the east side. So we hope that you like this video. Please give us a thumbs up. Smash up that notification bell. Bob, of course, wants you to. Give us your comments. Let us know. Do you like Treble Day videos? If you like them, please give us comments. Let us know. So remember, we're head of swirl. Come travel in our incredible out west world. Bye.